everyone. Welcome to Poisonous People. In this video, we are continuing our series in diagnosing narcissism. And in this video, we're going to focus on the third criterion, which is believes he or she is special. And it reads as follows in the DSM-5. Believes that he or she is special and unique and can only be understood by or should associate with other special or high status people or institutions. So when we talk about criterion number three, I personally tend to dismiss the word special and I like to focus more on the word unique because uniqueness is what separates us from the crowd. Narcissists cannot stand to be thought of as ordinary or average. So they tend to either want to be viewed as a unique individual or they will attach themselves to other people that are high status. But let me just focus on this unique aspect first. So one of the ways that I tend to notice that this criterion is popping up in a narcissist's personality is by the overuse of superlatives. Now, what are superlatives? If we think back to grammar class, uh, superlatives are adjectives that describe the degree to which um, a certain characteristic exists. So superlatives might be skinniest, ugliest, prettiest, um, highest, lowest, fastest, slowest. It's the words that end in E-S-T because it's not good enough to just be fast, right? If I'm the fastest runner on the track, that sets me apart from all the other runners who are just simply fast. So you will see that narcissists will use superlatives. At least I've noticed this. This is just me personally. And it doesn't matter if those superlatives are positive or negative. Um, so if I can kind of relate this to the narcissistic supply, you will frequently hear people saying that narcissists just want any attention. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. So even if you're saying negative things about them, that's wonderful. If they're stuck in your head, then they must be special, right? So this is why they love this kind of stuff, even if it's negative. So back to the superlatives. You might hear a narcissist say, I got the worst grade on the test. And you might think to yourself, well, don't narcissists want to um, be seen as perfect? Well, of course they do, but they also want to be seen as unique. So if a narcissist said, I got the worst grade on the test, what that's going to do is it's going to separate them because they reached some sort of negative achievement. It's the worst grade. Of course, they're not going to take responsibility for that. They will, they will blame it on the teacher or somebody else, you know, got them in trouble and the teacher thought they were cheating. And so, you know, and I wound up getting the worst grade out of the whole semester. What these superlatives do is they bring attention onto the narcissist. And if we're paying attention to the narcissist, we're not paying attention to all the other little people who have just kind of faded into the background of mediocrity. You know, all those average Joes out there that don't have anything special about them. And even if the narcissist is bragging about something negative, we're feeding them with, uh, we're fawning over them with our concern. Oh, you poor thing. That just sounds awful. And this is also why they play the victim in many cases. You'll also see this happening um, in, in the form of topping. So the narcissist is always going to try to top you and everybody else. They want, and they want that superlative position. So let's say um, there's a narcissist at work 
everybody's at work. Everybody's, you know, it's a Monday morning. Everybody's kind of just standing around the water cooler. And somebody says to you, what did you do this weekend? And you say, oh my gosh, I just, ugh, it was a terrible weekend. I got pulled over by a cop for speeding. I have to pay a ticket now. It's just awful. If the narcissist sees that everybody's paying attention to that person, the narcissist needs to be the special one. So they're going to pull the attention away and they're going to have to top that story. And they're going to say something like, well, that's nothing. I spent the weekend in jail. Of course, it doesn't have to, it, it's not, it's usually not a true story. This is, this is the bragging and the nonsense. Some of the lies that narcissists tell, we can credit to criterion one and two, the fantasies. Some of the lies that narcissists tell, it comes from those, those non-bizarre delusions that I talked about, that they actually believe these fantasies. But sometimes they will lie for this reason. It, it's like, I, I just can't stand to see this person getting the attention. So I'm just going to make up some story. So now everybody turns their attention to me. Now, of course, they would much rather have stories that are positive and paint them in a positive light. But if they have to, they will use these stories in a negative light if it gives them that attention so, so they can be set apart. But let me now focus on the tail end of that and the tendency to associate themselves with high status people and institutions. Sometimes they will do just the opposite and hang out with people that are much lower than they are in their eyes. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to, to be a 10 when you're hanging around a bunch of sixes, right? So sometimes I have seen that narcissists will associate themselves with very high status people. But when I see that happening, it's usually short lived because you're hanging out with a bunch of tens. And when everybody's a 10, you're not special anymore. You're going to have to work even harder to be set apart from all these tens. So this is another reason why you might see narcissists misplaced socially. Um, they're either hanging out with people that are too high status or they are too high status for the group of people they've chosen. But then you're going to hear about it for the rest of your life, how I once knew Elvis or whatever, you know, they're going to brag about that one time they played volleyball with Kathleen Turner or something. I call it riding the coattails of other people's success. And they may have photos of that. They may have like little, little trophies of, of having been associated with these high status people that they can now present to you, lowly, pathetic you, who's just an average nobody. And they're going to tell you all these stories about the glory days when, you know, they were best friends with Michael Jackson or whoever. So the last thing I will say before I end this video is that you also have to understand that the high status people are also high status according to the narcissist. So you're also going to see those prior symptoms that, that really rely heavily on fantasy and non-bizarre delusion enter into the narcissist judgment over who is a high status person. Many years ago, um, I, I can't tell you if this man was a narcissist or not. I mean, he really really acted like one. I only had one conversation with him and this man was just very obnoxious and he came to see me because he wanted me to fix his daughter. Uh, he didn't like, he didn't like the guy that his daughter was dating and his daughter was like in her thirties. I mean, she was a grown woman. And this guy is basically asking me like, how can I break up my daughter and her boyfriend? And I'm explaining to him like, I, that's not how this works. But the other bizarre thing he kept doing throughout the whole session was he kept bragging about this total like local, local celebrity. I'm not even called this person a celebrity. This person is a lawyer who is known locally in my area. 
and I'm just going to call the guy uh, Joe Lawyer, okay? But this is this is a lawyer that lives in my area, and when you drive down the major highways, you see this person. He's got billboards on highways. He's got um, commercials on TV. He's got a pretty big law practice. And this man just kept saying, you know, I'm really good friends with Joe Lawyer. Joe Lawyer and I, yeah, I know him. You know Joe Lawyer from TV? Yeah, I know that guy. The point is this person, Joe Lawyer, is not exactly what we would call a celebrity. But so that's the other point I wanna make is that when we're talking about high status people, the high status doesn't need to be what you and I would consider high status in greater society. The high status person can simply be somebody that the narcissist considers to be high status. Somebody that is high status in the narcissist's mind. It could just be somebody that they met at the company Christmas party and that person seemed very witty. And, and, and now that person seems high status in the narcissist's mind. So the narcissist might say, well, now I want to hang out with that guy because he was like the funniest guy at the party. That's somebody I want to attach my, my reputation to. So anyway, I hope this opened up criterion number three a little bit more for you. And if you have any other thoughts you'd like to add, please leave them in the comments. I'm Jen Guerriero, and this is Poisonous People. Thanks for watching.